Corinthians uh, chapter 12. We'll be starting at that 7 verse through the 10th verse. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 verse through the 10th verse. Amen. When you get it, stand to your feet as our custom in the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. Hope you got your Bibles with you, your smartphones, your tablets, all the little devices that do all the thinking for us nowadays. Utilize them. Or if you don't have one of those, you can look up at the screens, the monitors, and the scriptures on the, on the monitors. When you get it, say, I got it. Amen, amen. And the word of God begins to read. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessity, in persecution. I'm sorry, let me start over. At least I should, verse 7, at least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation. Therefore, was given to me a thorn in the flesh the messenger of Satan to perfect me. Least I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities yes. that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Yes. Yes. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, I am strong. And that you may be seen in the presence of the Lord. Now, I know that your neighbor, the person sitting next to you, might not like the title of this message. So what I want you to do right now, if you're sitting by somebody, I want you to grab their hand. Everybody grab everybody's hands. I want you to look at them and tell them. Do me this favor. Say, neighbor, neighbor. Sometimes, sometimes you got to live with it. Look at the other person on the other side and say, sometimes. You got to live with it. You know, this, this kind of goes in line with you can, you can see how the spirit of God works when Bishop was talking about marriage and how you got to go through some things. But sometimes you just got to live with it. You know, so, but, 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 but this kind of brings it into mind of uh, a friend of mine at work uh, came into my office one day and they said, Pastor Scotty, uh, teach me how to pray. And I said, well, let me go clock out first. It's, it's a time for everything. I, I just, you know. So let me, let me, I'm going to take my lunch right now. And let's, let's talk about prayer. And he said, can you just teach me how to pray? And as I talked to him, what I found out was that he was really going through something and was at a bad place in his life, in his home, in his marriage. And everything around him was deteriorating and it was starting to give way. So, he told me, he said, Pastor Scott, I asked the Lord to fix it, and after praying, then nothing changed. He said, I kept going to God. He said, so I believe that it was, wasn't changing because I was doing something incorrect. I was praying incorrectly. I wasn't praying right. So I went back before God, and it just seemed like he just not answering my prayers. He not listening to me when I do pray to him. So he say, Pastor Scott, I've been on my knees. I've been begging God. I've been pleading with God just to do something. And God did nothing. And if you think about it, all of us have been in that place before. Or you're going to go to that place if you haven't been to that place. You will find your way to that place because Life have a way of delivering us into painful positions with problems on every side. It got a way of putting us in places and around people and around things and in situations that's very painful that we got no control over and we can't do nothing about what's going on. And it seems like everything you pray about, it goes unanswered. If you haven't been there, you will get there. Just keep on living. 
Just keep on waking up every morning and it will come. And with all that going on, with all the pain and suffering that you're going through and you enduring, and, 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 and you did just what any good saint of God would do. You pray. You pray. You endured and you pray. You went to God and you asked God to do something about what you was going through. And you heard the preacher tell you that God hear all prayers and he answer all prayers. And that is true. You heard, you heard this be said to you. And that is the truth. And, 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 and you've been around people that when they prayed, God responded and answered their prayers in the flat, in the blink of an eye. And you was wondering, well, what about me? Well, why did he answer his prayers or her prayers so fast, but not mine? I just heard him say, I believe in God that he's going to give me this. And I turn around two weeks later and they stand and testify that God gave me this. But I'm before him asking him over and over again, what about me? So you just go on believing God and trusting God. And you said amen with the expectation that shortly after you got off your knees, God was going to clock in and go to work on your behalf. And he was going to punch the clock and he was going to begin to work on your, on your behalf because you're a proud water. Because you keep your face before God. You pray to God. And, and, and you believe that he is going to go to work on your behalf. And, 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 and if you've ever been there before, now I know some of us ain't been there before because we like the fourth person in the Trinity. You know, uh, 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 God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and then you. You just that close to God. Well, you've never been through this before, so I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the folks that been there before, yeah. that know that sometime when you pray to God, it seems like you ain't getting no answer. And you got the expectation that when I rise off the smallest place on my body, which is my knees, because if I can kneel before God, then I can stand before anything. So you find that when you get up off your knees, you have the expectation that things are going to change. But when you stood up, nothing changed. The weeks went by, the days went by, and nothing changed. So you did what everybody else would do. You prayed again. You prayed, and you still was hurt. You prayed, and the door wasn't open. You prayed, and your relationship wasn't reconciled. You prayed, and the sickness was still there. And you got enough faith to know that sometimes it takes more than one prayer. So you prayed again. You got back on your knees and you asked the Lord to heal this, to fix that, to move over here, to bless over there. And you gave it to God believing surely the Lord would move somewhere in that cycle of prayer. You started to get frustrated. Yeah. Come on, now, if you've been there, um, and I'm going to talk to the people that have been there. For the ones that haven't been there, this ain't for you. But if you've been there before, nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor. I've been there before. Yeah. Been there and done that. Yeah. Seen that and heard it. Yeah. Walked yeah. through it and felt it. I know yeah. what that's like to get before yeah. God and it seemed like he's not listening to me. Yeah. Seemed like I'm the only one doing all the talking. Somebody in here ought to know what I'm talking about, that you've been through that before. Yeah. You may be going through it right now, but I just want to encourage you that God does hear your prayer and God does answer your prayer. And Paul will show us in the text how God answers your prayer and when and why he answers your prayer. So, 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 so you asking God to fix this, heal that, work on this over there, bless right there, and you get frustrated in the middle of all that. And, and, and all of a sudden, I want you to know that I know what it feels like to be asking God for something. And it seems like it never happened. I want you to know that the bishop know what it seems like to ask God for something. And it seems like it's not going to happen. I, I, I want you to know that you know that there are times you pray to God and it seems like something should happen, but it just don't happen. And I would suggest to you that there's a possibility of another answer. Uh, maybe it's not the words you pray. Maybe it's not the fact that God is not answering you. Maybe there's another possibility. Why when you pray, nothing happened? Maybe there's something else going on. Maybe it's not just that you got down and you didn't pray the correct prayer and say the right words or quote the right scripture when you prayed. Maybe it's another possibility. And that's the experience of the Apostle Paul in our text. 
this gospel gold trial, this anointed apostle who penned 13 of the 27 books of the New Testament, this man that outside of Jesus Christ has done more for the kingdom of God than any other man ever has. This anointed apostle who, 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 who more than any other person besides Jesus suffered and was persecuted and gave his life for the word of God. Paul was God's best. He was God's best. And, 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 and in the opening verses of chapter 12, when you get a chance on your spare time, I want you to read chapter 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the entire chapter. In the opening verses, Paul began to brag and boast about some things that God had done for him. He said, that's if you read the first six verses in your own time, read the first six verses. Paul talks about himself in the third person. He said, I know a man who was blessed by God that he was lifted up into the third heavens. That he did what Star Trek did. He boldly went where no man had gone before. Right. He said, I went to the third heavens. And he said, and God gave me revelations of things that no other man has ever known. And he said, God has shown me the mysteries of his will. God has taken me behind the curtain of humanity so I might understand divinity. He said, God has blessed me with an abundance of revelation. He testified in verse 6 of his blessedness that God has shown him all these things. But in verse 7, his testimony took a tragic turn. He said, I was blessed with all of this. But unless I be exalted above measure, I also was given a thorn in the flesh. He said, I got all these revelations, but then I got a thorn in the flesh. He said, God blessed me, but I got a thorn in the flesh. So, so, so scholars have speculated all through the years, down through the generations, for centuries, over what that thorn metaphorically might mean when Paul said, I had a thorn in my flesh. They have wondered what that thorn represented, and there's really no evidence in the scriptures that tells us what Paul was actually speaking about. Was it a physical issue? Was it chronic illness? Was it addictive habit? Was it some form of sinful living? One thing we do know is that we don't know what it really was. But we do know that he said, I got a thorn in my flesh. Something is sticking me in my side. It's irritating me. It's bothering me. And it seems like there's nothing I can do about it. But I'm blessed. But the word that Paul used, thorn, refers to something that has been stuck so deeply inside him that it wounded him so much that he can't pull it out himself. Sometimes stuff happens in your life that wounds you so badly that you can't pull it out by yourself. You might attempt to, but you'll find out that it's still there, eating at you after all them years and bothering you after all that time. And he said, I've been given a thorn that was a messenger from Satan to buffet me. That word buffet is a Greek word which literally means to punch, to throw a strike. See, I've been given a punch, a strike been thrown at me by the enemy. It's a messenger from I've been given this. So Paul says what he's saying is I had all these blessings but I also had something that wounded me so very badly that it struck violent blows against me that it literally made it hard for me to live. Come on now, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Now, 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 now. Now, there are two things about this storm when Paul talked about it that kind of bothered me and kind of made me want to dig and find out why, what is he really talking about? Why would he be saying that, it, that you know, this storm was in my side and it was striking hard blows against me? And, 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 and how can I continue to stand when I'm being hit on every side? My marriage is in trouble. My job is in trouble. My finances is in trouble. My health is in trouble. Everything is thorn sticking me in my side. How do I stand? Paul begins to give this, 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 this testimony about this thorn, and, 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 and I begin to wonder about it. And the first one is that Paul says, 
I was given a thorn. Come on. Break it down. They're right there written in your Bible. He said I was given a thorn. And that made me ask the question, who gave it to him? Bishop just got through quoting the word of God in so many terms to say that Satan can't do anything to you unless he get permission from God. So I'm wondering, who gave him this thorn? The, the same one who gave him the abundance of revelations that gave him all of understanding and let him see divinity went past the curtain of humanity? It's the same one that gave him the thorn. The same one that blessed him. The same God who called him. The same God who says he loved him. The same God who was responsible for the painful situation that he experienced is the same God that gave him the thorn. God give thorns sometimes. Now, that ought to resonate with you. That ought to resonate with everybody in here. That God give thorns sometimes. Because <laughs> you got to be cautious. Y'all ready? Of being jealous of folk who look like they got something to boast about. You got to be careful about being envious of folks that look like they got the right resume. They drive the right car that you want. Live in the right neighborhood that you desire. And have the right kind of marriage that you want. See, you got to be careful not to be envious of Because I found out through Paul in the text that sometimes those that can brag in verse 1 end up crying in verse 7. See, you got to know that sometimes you can say I'm blessed. And I'm highly favored and it's all together. But it ain't all together in verse number seven. You were able to say that in one, but not in seven. Because sometimes you may find yourself carrying a phone. You see, they got their Sunday best on. Uh, they brought their big Bibles in, and, 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 and they know how to shout at shouting time. They got it all together, but also, they got a thorn that you don't know about. Some of them sitting on the side of you, they got a thorn that you don't know about. Uh, you got to be cautious about judging folks who thorns you do know about. Come on, now, I'm about to help you. You got to be cautious of judging folks who thorns you do know about. You know they got this issue. You know they got this problem. So you determine in yourself to make a judgment based on you what you know about them. You got to be careful not to make a judgment about folks because you know what thorn they got. There are some moments when their thorns might be exposed. You know, when you might know that they got a drinking problem or a smoking problem or a sexual addiction or a lying or stealing, they thorns might be exposed sometimes to why you know about them. But that don't mean, my sister, my brother, that you make some judgment about them. That don't mean that you waste more time talking about them instead of spending more time praying about them. You see, the Lord... Because they got a thorn, don't mean the Lord ain't in their life. Amen. You see, sometimes the thorn has been God-given. Yeah. Now you can tweet this, post this on Facebook, but you tell them the presence of a thorn does not signal the absence of God. <laughs> because that man don't praise like you. Because that man don't dance like you. Because that man don't jump like you. Because that man don't sing like you. Because that man don't do it the way you do it. Don't mean that there's an absence of God in his life. Just mean that you saw that thorn and you decided to judge him. You see, you see, you see, you got some thorns in your life. Some pains in your life. It may hurt. It may break you. You might not like it. But it does not mean that God is not present. Amen. Amen. It puzzled me. That God gave a thorn. But even more. Paul says so. He said. When I realized I had a thorn. I prayed. Uh -huh. Not once. Not twice, uh -huh. thrice. Three times I prayed. 
I asked the Lord to take it from me, and God said, my grace is sufficient. I prayed, and God did not do what I asked him to do. I prayed, and the pain didn't go away. I prayed, and the situation didn't get no better. I prayed, and God didn't do nothing about what I was going through. Have you ever been there before? Have you ever got down on your knees and asked God for something that seemed like the world and nobody, including God, didn't care about what you was talking about and about what you was praying about? Yes. Paul, this anointed apostle, this man that was anointed, he knew how to pray. Better than you and I, he knew how to pray. He knew how to pray in all these different languages. He knew how to use all the right words. He knew the scriptures from top to bottom. He prayed one of them, Abraham, Isaac, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob prayers, one of them good old Baptist prayers. And Lord, I know you're going to do something for me. I know, Lord, you're going to step down out of heaven and you're going to change my situation. He prayed one of them good old Baptist prayers where he knew that God would move on his behalf. He prayed with all the right words. He answered, I know God is a healer. I know he's a redeemer. I know he's a way maker. I know he's the Lord of Lords and the kings of kings. He's the first, the last, the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, the bread when I'm hungry, water when I'm thirsty. He's my will in the middle of the will, my rock in the weary land. He's God and God all by himself. He prayed all that. He prayed all that. You know what God told him? Look to your neighbor. Live with him. Live with him. He told him live with him. God will sometimes tell you, you got to live with him. Ain't it amazing how sometimes God allows us makes us and even force us to live with things that bruise us so deeply. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Lord. And we thank the world and came to him because he told me to live with it. I remember falling off a ladder and breaking my leg and the doctor looked at me and said, we're going to do whatever we can do. I said, I don't want to live. I don't want to live with it. Live with it. And you'll find out sometime, most of the time, if you're listening to God, why you got to live with it. You see, sometimes God refused to deliver us from things that humble us and handicap us. As much as you don't want to hear this, even though you walk by faith and not by sight, even though you name it, you claim it, you blab it and grab it, you believe it and receive it, but the practical reality and the truth of it is, sometimes experiences in life, they sometimes mean that you just got to live with it. God said you got to learn to live with it. You got to accept that there are some things that just don't change. Let me give you some reasons. There are some things that you just got to learn how to live with. Why you got to learn how to live with thorns in your side? Why you got to endure painful positions and things like that? That prayer won't seem to alleviate. No matter how many times you go before God. Let me give you some reasons why you got to live with thorns. You ready? Amen. You ready? Amen. You sure you ready? Yeah. Now I told you you might not like this. Amen. One reason you got to live with thorns is because you ain't got no choice. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Ain't no choice, Pastor. Is it anything I can do about this limp? Mm -hmm. no. Sometimes you ain't got no choice. Might be simple, but it's profound. Paul prayed three times for the Lord to give him another option. Take it away, move it, fix it, make it better. And the Lord replied, in essence, I can't do that. You got to endure this. You got to go through this. I can't deliver you from this. Your only choice is to live with it. No, 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 no. Now, here's why somebody need to embrace that. Because you mistakenly thought the purpose of prayer is to get what you want from God. 
You, 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 you may have got it twisted for a minute and thought that when you prayed, it was because you were supposed to get something from God. So, 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 so you think that because you pray, God is obligated to fulfill it. But let me tell you the truth about prayer. Tweet this on Facebook if you want to. Just get this out of your mind. The power of prayer and the purpose of prayer is not for God to will what you want, but for you to want what God will. All right. Let me repeat it. Right. Come on now. The purpose and power of prayer is not for God to will what you want, but for you to want what God will. Okay, 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 okay. You might have missed that. You might have missed that. The power and the purpose of prayer is not for God to will what you want, but for you to want what God will. Yeah, what's in his will? Yeah. Amen. Because sometimes there's no other choice but to surrender to God, to the will of God. See, Bishop said he ran around and he did this and he did that, but he got into a position where he got wounded so bad uh -huh. that he had to give his will over to God's will. That's right. You see, I remember going through some things where I was in and out of the penitentiary, and God said, you either going to give over to my will. See, sometimes, you got to learn how to surrender yourself over to God's will. Can I make you two biblical promises? Two biblical promises. Two of them that you can stand on. Number one, prayer will always change things. It'll always change things. But sometimes the only thing that's going to change is you. You, 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 you might want your situation to change, but you're going to change in the situation. You should come out the situation better. Good, yeah. stronger, faster, enduring to the end. You went in one way, but you should come out another. You, 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 you see, sometimes prayer don't change the people around you. It don't fix what you're going through. It doesn't make it things any easier for you, but it changed your heart. It changed your mind. It changed your disposition. It changes your perspective, the way you see things. Oh, yeah. You preach it. Come on now. And the other promise is that prayer will change things and God will always answer. Yeah. I can make you two promises. Oh, yeah. And yes, it's really only one answer that you want when you pray. If you're going to be truthful. It's really only one answer you want when you pray. When you come to a traffic light sometime, it's green. And green is telling you to go through. Sometimes God green lights our prayers. Sometimes we pray in accordance with God's will and the green light to our prayers come through. And God say, go, that is for you. Sometimes you get a green light when you pray, but sometimes you come up on a light that's yellow. Now, I know some of y'all, like my daughter, like, you know I love you, honey, don't really know what a yellow light means. She thinks a yellow light means just proceed on through. It's green for you. But I'm going to tell you that sometimes a yellow light will pop up in your life. Now, if you like some folks I know that don't really recognize what a yellow light is, sometimes God yellow lights your prayers. He say, wait. Either you're not ready for it, or it's not ready for you. So God says, wait for a little while. I'm going to do something just not yet. And every now and then, a traffic light turns red. And red means stop. It means don't move. Don't go through. Proceed no further. Sometimes, God red lights your prayer. Sometimes his answer is no. And you got to learn to live with. You got to learn to live with some no's. When Jesus was in the garden of the enemy to be delivered from Calvary, he asked God, and God said no. See, when you mature in faith, you learn to accept 
you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you mature in faith, you learn to accept them no's from God. You learn that when the Lord says no, he got a reason why he's saying no. You see, when you come to a traffic light and it's red, the reason why it's red is because there's some unseen traffic that's coming your way. Because you can't see what's coming your way. We can either sit back and roll through the red light and crash into something, or we can stop and not proceed. We can not go on in front. We can better understand why God didn't come and answer some things that we asked him to do. So we live with it because the thorns serve his purpose. He said no to you and put the thorn in your way because it serves his purpose. He needs you to understand. So living with the thorns will help you understand what God is actually doing. You see in verses 1 through 6, Paul talks about the abundance of blessings. But in verses 7, he declares, it's a thorn that was brought to me so the power of Christ may show up in me. It wasn't in the abundance of revelation. The power of Christ didn't come through the blessings. The power of Christ comes through the thorn. You think it come through your house and your car, your material possessions. But my pre my bishop teach us that the material things are not the blessing. You the blessing. You don't forget what it's about. You think the house, the car, and all that the bank account is the blessing. But you the blessing. It's the result of your obedience to what God. So live with it. So live with it. You might can't shout because you don't want to hear that this morning. But the truth is, it's not what you drive or where you live. It's not your bank account. It's not my position that declares the power of Christ in me. It's the Lord that sustains me. It's the Lord that keeps me. It's the Lord that breaks me free. When all hell break loose, the Lord said, Paul, I need my strength to be made perfect. The word perfect in the Greek literally means it's almost like a cooking term. It means to add some missing ingredients. Paul, I need to add a little something to your mission. I got to add a little spice to your first aid. I need to add something to your nonsense. It's something that's missing that only a thorn. Only some hard times. Only some trials, troubles, and tribulations equals trust in God. Only some of these TNTs, plus T's, is going to get this ingredient to you. So what's being said to Paul is, I've got to give you a thorn so I can add some missing ingredients. You got all the blessings. You got all the revelations. But there's still something that's missing that you don't get in the blessings. That I can't give you in the blessings. That I only can give to you in the tone. See, you can't get patience in a blessing. You got to be put in a position where you got to wait for the red light in your brain. You got to understand that sometimes you put in a position where you got to wait. Now, I want to tell you something. Be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. Lord, give me a little bit more patience. He's going to put you in a position where you got to wait. So, I can't take a thorn because I got to take a thorn because you can't get to me what I need, Lord, unless I take a thorn. You see, what the text is really telling us, in the context of the text, is telling us is if, Lord, if, 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 if you remove this painful problem, if you deliver me from it, you won't desire what I got for you. If I take this from you, you won't desire what I really got for you. You won't want what you really need. You may not like it. It may hurt you. You may want it gone, but without it, you wouldn't have prayed for me. If I didn't put you in jail, you wouldn't have never bowed down and prayed. If I didn't make you sick, you wouldn't have never bowed down and prayed. If I didn't make you lose your job, you wouldn't have never bowed down and prayed. I got to put 
put you in possession while you will come to me and get what you need. Without it, you wouldn't have survived. Without it, you wouldn't have been in church this morning. Without it, hey, you would not have been in the Word. You wouldn't have been reading your Bible if I didn't give you a thought. Without it, you wouldn't even serve me. Yeah, if I didn't send the cake of worrying up your finances, you wouldn't tie. If I didn't give it to you, you would not do what you're supposed to do. Live with it, because you ain't got no choice. Live with it, because it serves its purpose. Live with it, because you blessed in it, in spite of it. I may have a thorn, but I also have some blessings. God didn't just answer Paul, no. We can find that in the text. God replied, my grace is sufficient. That word sufficient is a military term. Some of y'all been in the military might understand it. When you say it's sufficient, it does not mean enough. It means to defend. It means to attack against whatever's coming up against you. My grace is on the attack. My grace is not enough. It's more than enough. I'm not an enough God. I'm more than enough God. You're not just a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. See, you got to understand something. That my grace is sufficient. My grace defends against attacks. The attacks of the wicked ones. My grace will hold you and go and try to kill you. My grace will make you live with thorns want you to die. Stop using your thorns for an excuse not to learn how to live with it. Stop using your thorns as a reason not to try living with it. I'm glad Jesus lived with his thorns. I'm glad when they pressed that crown on his head full of nothing but thorns that he decided that I was worth it. I'm glad that Buddha can't do it. Mohammed can't do it. I'm glad that the Pope can't do it. None of them got up from the grave like Jesus the Christ who spent three days in that cave back slapped out and told him to behave. I'm talking about Jesus the Lamb of God who took this thorns that didn't belong to him that belong to me and belong to you. You need to know this morning that the presence of thorns does not equate the absence of God in your life. You need to know because you're going through trials, troubles, and tribulations don't mean that God is absent. A lot of times, most of the time, you, children of God, Lord the Lord will give you a thorn. Yes. Oh, yes. Amen, amen. So you seek him. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you pray to him. Thank you, I know a sister in here oh, that wanted a child Thank you, Jesus. and she prayed yes, yes, yes. probably more than three times. She searched and went after the Lord, but I tell you, if she would have just had a baby right off, she wouldn't have never prayed. But she was put in a position where she had to pray. She had to go out there. Church, I want to encourage you this morning. Tell you that the absence of God is not in your life. God is there. 